So my name is Aaron. We're going to be talking about um, the sort of modernization of your BI infrastructure uh, to kind of roll with the different innovations that are coming out, the different disruptors that have ha that have come out, and of course the the giant question mark that lies you know 18 to 36 months out. Um, so before we get into uh, that kind of stuff, we're okay. you guys can see everything okay? That's looking okay. Um, who has? Uh, and, and this is kind of a, a bit of a trick question. Um, I know that we're all here around, sort of centered around the Cognos universe, uh, and that's that's good. So what else do you have? Who's got some SAP BO in under the hood? Are you 100% sure? <laughs> all right, how about, uh, how about an easy one, some Power BI? Who's using Power BI? Okay, so those of you that are using Power BI, is that kind of on the up? trend, like there's more and more of that happening, or is it just in the experimental phase? Okay, so I'm gonna make a crazy assumption that everyone's got some Tableau in the mix, or some Click. Okay, is anyone playing with any of the other stuff, like the data discovery tools like Alteryx, or uh, ClearStory, or Domo, or anything like that? Is that popping up on anybody's radar? Our organization has a little bit of Domo and a little bit of Amplin. Okay, so, that, so is it, it's kind of like an individual is kind of picking it up and and they're going from there, or is it is or is it an organizational initiative? Okay. All right. So all of this, all of these things are kind of part of the the shifting landscape. So uh, over the past, uh, at least the last five years, there's been huge disruptions to uh, sort of the traditional mega vendor BI presence, right? So your SAPs, your IBMs, Oracle, MicroStrategy, all of that. Their dominance has been challenged by. Uh, the clicks and tableaus and spot fires and then all the other 238 BI tools that have come on the market uh, in the last decade. Uh, and that's actually an, not an exaggeration. So that's, that's a real number. Uh, and the number is growing. So what we're going to look at uh, is how um, your organizations can roll with um, the initiatives to modernize your, your BI infrastructure, kind of get take a pulse of where you're at uh, on that journey, uh, and how um, Modio, Modio's technology is kind of enabling the different uh, business cases that are popping up uh, much faster than IBM can roll out new uh, features and functions. So just to kind of level set, um, we're all familiar with why Click and Tableau ate Cognos's lunch. Like that's not a, that's not a, we don't have to kind of go into that. Um, it's basically because they introduced something that Cognos had 20 years ago, but they put a, a sexier wrapper around it. Uh, so this whole in-memory uh, uh, quick response uh, that Tableau and Click brings, PowerPlay had uh, 20 years ago. We, we actually saw that this morning during, uh, during the keynote. The difference between now and then is today, someone can go online and download that, and they're up and running in, in five minutes, zero friction. And they've got an unlimited license for, you know, with anywhere between uh, two weeks and, and forever. So a little bit about us. Um, Modi has been around for uh, almost 20 years. Our background is in Enterprise BI. Uh, specifically, we came up through the, uh, through the Cognos ranks, uh, like a lot of the folks in the room. Um, and basically, our, our mission has been to make uh, BI deployments better through services and uh, technology. So what we're going to do here, uh, I'm going to set you up for winning that elusive brown piece of pie the next time you play Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> because that's the hard, for me, it's the hardest one to get. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little trip back in time for a few slides just to kind of look at how, how we got to today, where today uh, Power BI is the number one uh, BI platform on the market according to the Gartner Magic Quadrant. And nobody saw that coming four years ago. That was just, if I said that four years ago, I'd have been tomatoed. Right, so the things have changed, but we're going to go back a little bit uh, to the early 50s when the uh, Lions Tea Company was one of the great British institutions. So they provided a hot cup of tea and a, and a penny bun to people throughout the war and the depression. So what does that have to do with this? Well, they actually have a more relevant claim to flame, fame. So they, and here's your brown piece of pie factoid. So they invented a Leo or Lions Electronic Office, and it was on this massive machine uh, with over 6,000 vacuum tubes that they were able to aggregate all of the sales from all their tea shops across the UK. 1951. I'm just, I just want to put that out there again. So 
uh, 70, or almost 70 years ago. They were able to do that and predict how many cakes and sandwiches to bake for the following day to ship to their different, uh, different tea shops across the country. That's a, I, you take the 6,000 pound or 6,000 vacuum tube uh, uh, fact of that, that's happening today. Like this is a common retail use case. This is what they did in 1951. So if we go through uh, time, we fast forward to 1958, where Hans Peter Loon publishes uh, a groundbreaking paper for IBM entitled A Business Intelligence System. That was the first time the term was actually introduced. We fast forward to 1989. Uh, so those of us have been in the Cognos space know who Howard Dresner and, uh, is. He became one of the leading analysts, research analysts for uh, Gartner. He basically gave birth to the industry. He described uh, facts and methods to use uh, across any organization. So using data to, cur to arrive at answers and kind of removing uh, the sporadic uh, spreadsheets and things like that. So he created the whole concept of the single version of the truth. So this is the birth of the industry. So if we fast forward to 95, when uh, we've got, people have seen all these vendors, right? We've seen Cognos, Hyperion, MicroStrategy, uh, SAP, all of this. This is where the industry really took off. This was the, a really exciting time um, to be in BI because you, you know, new companies were buying it. It was, it was a really, really cool time to do it. Um, and over the decade, over the 10 years that, that followed, Almost every organization in the world had a BI implementation or another, or multiple, right? Depending on, on how the uh, organization uh, went over the next couple of years, there was, ag there was mergers, acquisitions, there was different departments uh, approaching this at different times. So the growth of operational reporting owned by IT is a critical differentiator there. So Cognos is owned by IT, SAP is owned by IT. You want data models, you want to report, you, it goes through uh, a workflow and what comes out the other end is real, trusted, and enterprise quality data. If we fast forward to 2010, the no this notion of self-service BI uh, is really starting to catch fire, right? So Click and Tableau have been around prior to this, but it's really starting to gain steam in this, uh, in this time period. Throughout the, uh, you know, from 2010 to today, or let's go back maybe a couple of years, these companies really made massive inroads uh, inside of every single organization that was using reporting for a couple of reasons. One, they were really, really cheap, right? It wasn't difficult to buy Tableau. It wasn't difficult to buy Click because I could put it on my credit card. They make it even easier today because everything's moving to sort of a subscription-based model. So they've used um, kind of a, like a land and expand type model where one or two folks in a department can buy this, try it out, and then add two or three more, and it flies under the radar. No one, no one sees that they're spending $30, $40, $50 a month. It's just happening behind the scenes, and uh, it's not a problem until it is. So... Today, we see uh, more and more organizations trying to get their arms around what to do with the uh, massive number of different tools that are being used for the same purpose in an organization. So today, we kind of approach um, what organizations are doing in a, in, a different, uh, in a different light. So instead of having a technology-focused uh, solution, right, so it's Cognos is going to do this, SAP is going to do that, Tableau is going to do this other thing, it's what are people trying to do, right? Because if you think of what a person in an organization is doing, they have a job, and they use social tools, they'll use applications, they'll use paper and pencil, they'll use news feeds, they'll use whatever it is that they need to get through their workday, um, but that changes, right? Their needs change, the business needs change. So we've all seen how uh, it can be very difficult for the established mega vendors to adjust their offerings based on the change in trends in the workspace. And trends are usually uh, lagging indicators of what people are actually doing. So it takes a long time for IBM and SAP to catch up to what people are actually doing. In the meantime, they're downloading Power BI, or they're downloading something else, or they're going to download, does anyone know what they're going to download in 12 months from now? Well, no, because we don't know what's coming down the pipe. It's, this is all, uh, these are all risk items. So how do we, as, orga how, how do we, as people in organizations or, or, or people that support the people in organizations, how do we stay ahead of this? How do we acknowledge that there's a lot of different tools to do similar jobs? Right? Gartner themselves are saying that it's okay to use different tools for the right job. So if you have to use Tableau to do A, B, and C, use Tableau. Don't try and force uh, IBM Cognos into doing that. 
right? You, you might have the luxury of time to wait for something to come out so that it can do it better or you know, be on par, but by then the business need will have changed and will that keep up? So a lot of the innovation is coming from the smaller companies. And this is not new. This has been like this you know, since we were able to you know, turn square rocks into round rocks and move them around. So smaller vendors are always innovating faster uh, than the bigger ones. So we can try um, the things that have you know, failed in the past, right? Let's just standardize under one thing. Okay, everything else is gone. We do only this. Well, that works um, sometimes, but it mostly never works. Or you can you know, do the same thing, but with a sledgehammer. Right? You, no, you can't use this. If you're caught using this tool, you'll be you know, punished or put in the timeout chair or something like that. No, you can't use Power BI. You can't use whatever. But the point behind that, the reason people are doing that is they have uh, deliverables or they have tasks to do that don't necessarily, necessarily line up with the amount of time that it would, get, uh, it would take to get done under the current process. Does that, make, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So what if we just did it differently? What if we don't care what they use, right? What if suddenly, you know, uh, we flip a switch and say, you want to use click, use click. You don't want to use click, don't use click. You want to use something new, use that. I don't, I don't care. As IT, I don't care because we're going to talk about why I don't care in a few minutes. But the reason why you, you don't want to care is you, you should be looking at uh, an overall strategy, like a big tent strategy, where you're going to have to pull in different things. Not only are you, are you going to have to pull in different tools uh, to get different, jo uh, different types of jobs done, but you're going to also have to embrace um, the fact that you know, IBM Cognos version 12 is going to have something that's very different and potentially disruptive to all of the Cognos analytics that you already have out there. Just like the, the big switch from Cognos 10 to Cognos analytics, that's a big leap, right? It's almost as big as going from Series 7 to ReportNet. I'm dating myself there a little bit. But the, the idea is that you're going from one paradigm to another. Now there's going to be a lot of overlap and there's going to be a lot of things that are similar. Some things are going to be better, some things are simply going to be not there. Right? So one of the big things uh, in the early Cognos 11 or Cognos Analytics days was the, the, you know, the, the loss of, of putting things out to PDF. Well, that, now that's slowly coming back, but at the time that might have been a barrier to, to migration for a lot of, uh, a lot of folks. Um, you know, the, the UI was completely different. So that, that was a risk for some organizations that have large deployments. So how do you roll with all of these different uh, initiatives, not, from, not necessarily from different vendors, but from the same vendors themselves? So we're going to talk about uh, Modiothea, and this is this is. I'm not going to go into like, you know, why you need this, but I'm going to talk to you about how we've used this with other organizations to tackle some of these challenges. So what Thea does very well is it effectively abstracts from the end user what they're actually using. So for example, you might have um, you know a dashboard or something. Uh, along those lines that have visual assets that you already have. You, you have uh, sale, sales charts from Cognos. You have marketing uh, spend forecasts that are in, in Tableau. You've got some KPIs that are in Click. So these things are all out there already in your organization today. With Thea Let's, one of the things that Thea lets you do is bring all of those together into one place. So you might have a function called, uh, you know, a, a, you know, market, marketing, you know, if in marketing, uh, an event spend uh, role, and there might be five or six people. For them to get all of the information they need, they might have to go to four or five different systems. And that's fine because they're, they're smart enough, they know where to go. But suddenly there's a sixth a system on board, right, which is a new set of logins, a new credential, a new landing page, a new experience. So they have to bring that on board. So there's a good chance that they're going to miss that, especially if it becomes critical functionality. So Fiat basically draws a nice firewall between the end user and the technology that they're using. We'll get into that a little bit more. So if you're on the IT side of the house, does anyone here represent IT? And I don't mean as opponents of IT, I just mean <laughs> are in legitimately in IT. Okay. All right. So for the IT, I, for the IT folks, the benefits are, they're big. You, you already have all of this content out there. You've got models, uh, reports, queries, you know, visualizations, you name it. It's been out there for sometimes decades. So you have all of this. What you can do is you can reuse all of that in different ways. And we'll get into that a little bit later. We offer you the ability to effectively future-proof the organization. Because we know that 
no matter which technology investment you make, I don't, I don't care which one it is, that investment's gonna be at risk in five years, maximum. It's gonna be at risk of becoming obsolete, uh, becoming completely uh, um, taken over by a different organization, uh, support terms might change, uh, contractual terms might change. There's all kinds of risks associated with that, mostly because the pace of innovation from smaller vendors is forcing them to, to adapt. So there's always risk. So with Thea, you kind of insulate yourself against that risk. The big reason why uh, that's important is it allows IT to get creative. I know those two things don't always go together. But if suddenly IT can say, you know, I've been, I've been poking around and there's this, this tableau is popping up all over the place. So that's, that's interesting. So I've been doing more digging and I found that, oh, this thought spot thing is really cool. I think some of our users might benefit from that. Well, a, a, someone who's in IT in, in a capacity to make uh, big decisions isn't going to say, all right, we're ripping out Cognos, we're putting in ThoughtSpot. We've heard this before. We, we're, ripping out, we're ripping out Cognos, we're putting in SAP. That's, that's usually the threat when IBM comes to do their license audit. Or we're gonna, we're gonna, dis, we're gonna take down this and we're gonna put this. Well, that's, that's great, but that's not a real, um, that's, that's not an achievable outcome, uh, at least not in anything under a decade. So what we do, is we say, you, have this you already have this infrastructure, let's use it. Let's use it in different ways. Let's use it in more creative ways. And let's use it in ways that let you experiment with ThoughtSpot or Domo or A or B or C or any technology that you want to play with in a way that's not gonna disrupt the user community. And that, that's kind of cool too, because the business is always changing. The business needs are gonna say, we now need to do you know, four dimensional analysis with our frontal lobe. Right? And there's two technologies that can do that, so let's plug that in. So that might be something that comes out in two years from now. We, we don't know. The big thing is, we all know what the single version of the truth is. Uh, and there's different versions of that single version. But the idea is, a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of vetting has gone into those models that you have. Those packages, those reports. So you, I've never heard anyone, outside of the development and pre-deployment phase, I've rarely heard... Uh, customers say the data that's coming out of Cognos is not trustworthy. I don't think anyone's heard that here before, right? During the development phase, yes, there's probably data quality issues, but those are resolved. But by the time it goes out into production, that stuff is gone. You've heard uh, those charts are ugly. You've heard this isn't very fast. You've heard all of those things, but how many have actually heard that they don't trust the data that's coming out of their Cognos system? It's, if, if you did, that's fine, but that would be sort of the exceptional case. So that's, the, that's one of its biggest strengths. So you already have all of the governments that you need in the organization. So why not let that participate in Domo or Tableau or Click or Power BI or these other things that are threatening to you know, dismantle uh, what you've already put in place. So we'll talk about that later on. But the big winners are the people in the organization that need technology to do their work, right? I'm former Cognos and during the, the sales cycle, I often lose uh, track of the fact that uh, people don't really care what we're selling. No matter how engaged they are during the sales cycle or, or the initial deployment, um, you know, everyone here has been part of a, of a, of a big rollout where you, know, you spend a year with a bunch of consultants and, and really smart people. You build the models, you build the reports, and there was a big launch party and nobody cares, right? It's because they're doing their work. They have other things to do, and that big hype that was built up, you know, a year leading up to the deal being closed, and then a year leading after that to the thing, uh, to the the implementation being uh, rolled out, the expectations have changed, the needs have changed, the desire has changed, all of that has changed. So, how do you take advantage of that reality um, without having to cannibalize what you've already done? All right, we'll look at how um, people interact with this shortly, but what. It does, what Thea does really well is it drives engagement. And I'll show you this shortly. We do this by giving people uh, a very intuitive and immersive experience. It's an attractive way of seeing things that you're already familiar with. So Walt Disney knew, uh, and, he, and he's proven it, that people uh, are, are motivated to interact or spend on things that they already have, right? So Star Wars fans, anybody? Okay. Uh, I don't know how many copies of uh, the original Star Wars series I have on Blu-ray, DVD, VHS, Laserdisc. It's all the same stuff. But if I see, like, if I if I get an ad from from eBay tomorrow saying I can get it on uh, Betamax, 
probably going to buy it. <laughs> then I'll be looking for a beta, Betamax player. But the idea is that we, we bring something that's already familiar to your audience so that they're not, they don't feel threatened by it. They're already comfortable because they know what it is. It's going to look a little bit different, but they're going to feel very comfortable in what they're seeing. It's one spot for all the tooling, BI, and analytics that people need. So let's talk a little bit about business function. So we, you know, typically we, we break uh, content in BI systems down by subject area, you know, HR, finance, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Well, within that, there's different, there's different disciplines, there's different roles. There's roles that will tra uh, you know, traverse all of these different things. So we'll, we'll show you how to assemble content uh, for the people that are actually going to consume it. We don't care about the vendor. We're vendor agnostic. So we can plug into a dozen things today. Uh, you can plug into uh, a dozen things tomorrow. We have a, a, ni a nice open architecture that you can bolt onto any platform. And I'll show you how, how this matters here shortly. The big, the big one that we, we think is uh, you know, resonating very, very strongly, um, at least in our, in our conversations, is you can uh, leverage your existing investments. Right? No one has an appetite to displace uh, a 10-year-old Cognos deployment. No matter, no matter what the promise on the other side is, the reality is no one has that appetite because that's a costly and highly risky uh, endeavor. Nobody really wants to do this. So why not keep, it, keep what you have, uh, make it a little bit better? And we'll show you how we achieve uh, complete governance. So this is just a uh, fancy graphic of saying, you know, all that noise in the background that is your enterprise and that, you know, picture that background changing with different names all the time. Well, we can bring a level of cohesion to the chaos that's back there. So we'll take a look at that. But before I do, um, quick time check. Yep, we've got some time. Any, any questions on what I've said? Do I, do I sound like a madman? Do I sound like I, I shouldn't, you know, does it make sense? Is it, okay. It's nothing that you haven't heard before, right? All right. So I'm going to make sure I didn't time out here. So I'm going to refresh. And I am tethered to my phone because I don't trust the Wi-Fi anymore. <laughs> I've been burned too many times in the last 60 minutes. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be a little bit clunky, but we'll we'll get into this. All right. So welcome to Thea. So Thea is, um, as I mentioned, it's a platform for Modio that allows you to pull anything together into a single set of um, views, so that individuals can work without having to go to different systems. Does that sound an awful lot like a portal? Kind of, right? But we got a better name for it. We actually call it a game board because it's cooler. So, <laughs> uh, so if you think of the old portals like Vignette and Plumtree where you had, you know, uh, you know uh, GSR portlets or WSRP portlets you can bring in, there was, there was a lot of coding on the other side of that to make that work. Well, we've completely abstracted who we're, like which system we're talking to and how Thea can talk to it. So we treat content from Cognos the same as we treat content from Google, the same as we treat content from Power BI. It's, we, we, have a, we have a nice clean way of not caring about what's behind the scenes because you can do the same things to it. You can look at it, you can execute it, and you might be able to edit it in you know, one, of, one of different, uh, different ways that the tool allows. So from an, from an anatomical perspective, uh, game boards are made up of two components. They're made up of pages, uh, and they're made up of tiles. So on this particular game board, we have one page, as you can see it up here, and the content tiles are uh, fairly static. So the, one, the presentation we had linked from here, the rest is just links to different, uh, different applications. It could be you know, a, a ticketing system. It could be a help system. It could be just an email address. Uh, and then some pretty things to draw the eye. Right? So that part, um, we've invested a lot uh, in, in achieving to be able to make this thing aesthetically pleasing. So everyone's been subject to a slick demo. Right? And you don't pretend that you haven't. And, and don't pretend that you weren't enamored by that you know, spinning pie chart the first time you saw it. Or remember, anyone remember the first time they saw a bullet chart? Animate? It's like your heart melts, right? So when, when you see that, you're seeing something new. And it doesn't really matter what's behind it, because you're looking at it. That's what Tableau has been so good at. Look how good this looks. Don't worry about how I got there. 
but look how good this looks. So they've made a, a business on making things look good. What we're doing is we're borrowing the best from all the different uh, vendors. So we know that Tableau and Click make things look good. So we, we kind of cherry picked some of the concepts that they used. We know that Cognos and SAP are going to put the data out there that's correct. So we, we borrowed those concepts. So this is kind of the culmination of the, the, the best practices that we've seen. So the idea behind the game board is it's the place that people come to start their workday. So I could be a, a new hire, I could be a, you know, a project manager, I could be a CEO, it doesn't really matter. I've got a place to go, right? It's like the, th the single throat to choke. It's, it's a wonderful privilege to have because everything is here. What this allows you to do is you can start slowly introducing uh, new tools, right? So we have, uh, we have a lot of customers that are doing um, sort of central data dictionaries. Is that something you guys are seeing? where they're, they're redoing using things like Apache Atlas and to have these centralized data dictionaries. And you have these wonderful data scientist people and you know, really smart people and they say, look at all this wonderful things we did. Great, well, how, how, how am I gonna use it? Well, you just sign up for an account and you go here and then you click this and you submit this and you're good to go. Well, how about if I just have a little tile that says, hey, check out the new data dictionary. I already come here, right? This is my landing page. So you can introduce that. Or you can say, you know this, what's new in Thea 1.2 thing? We don't need that one anymore. We can change that to something more relevant. We can take it out. We can put a piece of BI content in there, whatever. You basically have the ability to serve the audience that's going to consume this. So it's, it's just like a TV show, right? I like watching Game of Thrones. I'm not gonna, you know, I also, also watch Elmo, but that's because my son is enamored by it. it doesn't, but, so Netflix doesn't confuse the two. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't show me things that are Sesame Street related when I want to see you know, people get burned by dragons because that's my thing. So the idea is that you know your audience and you can give them what they need. And of course, because there's an increasing demand uh, on IT resources, because I'm pretty sure, so there was a few IT folks here. Just show me again who you are. Okay, oh, there's more this time. <laughs> Good, so yeah. So, in the last in the last three years, have you have have your budgets increased for more people to do the more work that's being thrown at you, or is it the inverse? Are you losing people, or you, is your team staying the same size but they're stacking the work on? Which which one of those realities is yours? Depends on the quarter. The previous quarter. <laughs> okay. So, but I, I think it would be fair to say that uh, IT is being asked to do more with uh, not more resources. Like the, the, the correlation, the amount of work that you're being asked to do is not going up with the people that you have to do it. Is that fairish? All right, good. That means, that means I wasn't lied to when I asked this question. <laughs> good, so as a result of this, you want people to be more autonomous, right? You want them to be able to do things on their own a little bit more. At the same time, you don't want them to bring the system down. This is, this, again, this is where Cognos came in, right? You can create queries that didn't tear down the database. And there was governance in place for all that stuff. So through Thea as well, as your users mature on the platform or they, you know, they change function, you can allow them to do more things. At the beginning, you just let them point and click at things. But if you want them to do more, you can give them more. You can give them more autonomy. So what I'll do next is I'll walk through a couple of examples um, of Different business problems, oh, I'm just noticing that you can't see it all. Different business problems that have been solved uh, with, with Thea. So here's a really simple example. We'll take a, an organization that has um, an onboarding practice. So new, new hires come in to the organization. So it, it maybe for the first month, it, you know, it's, just think of a new grad, right? You're, you're in your 20s, you just get, you get that job at IBM, uh, and now you're in the big machine and you're, you're kind of lost, it's overwhelming. You, you have these difficult questions like, um, well, how do I know how to submit a, a, a dental claim? Well, who do you ask for that, right? So yeah, well, you just go to the HR portal, which is in SharePoint, and you navigate this structure, and you ask this question, and there you go. Well, there's a day. That's gone. Um, but what if you knew that new hires needed to do these 100 things all the time, right? Or specifically for their job function. Uh, you can organize all of that content in one place so that they just come here and look at it. So this is an example of a, of a game board uh, homepage that really doesn't do much other than keeps your attention and maybe has you watch the HR video that says, you, here's the things you can't do in our organization. Or uh, some, you know, some, some news from, uh, from the organization. You, know, you might have all of your human resources content 
locked down in one nice structure. So here's where I go to get my dental care, my employee handbook, all of this. They're all, notice how they're styled differently. That's deliberate to show you that they're coming from different systems, right? So some of them are coming from Google Drive, some of them are coming from SharePoint, some of them are coming from my hard drive, some of them are coming from SSRS. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's all in one place and you can control what goes into this. So for someone who's new to the organization, this is helping uh, get through those first few days. Not, not necessarily just for the employee, but it's taking, uh, it, it's freeing up other people who would be answering those questions like how do I file a dental claim? It's taking their time and putting that to better use. So that's an example. So if we look uh, a little bit more at something that uh, is more recent, um, a lot of higher ed um, uh, groups are looking to Thea to help um, bring people that are coming in, to, or students that are coming to different projects to find their way without having to poke around too much. So um, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, research work, uh, you have to, in, a, in, a, in order to apply, uh, receive grants, you have to propose uh, what your research is going to be. You, there's a lot of work that goes through that. This particular one, this particular game board uh, is intended to help students walk through that process, right? It's, it's not a very complex business problem but it's one that requires a lot of people to, to satisfy. So through the use of uh, Thea and game boards, they can consolidate all of that content in one place and the student themselves can actually go through and take care of it. So you don't notice there's not a lot of stuff here. There's just a few things and this takes care of it. That's it, you, this is your granting game board. Off you go. So let's go into something a little bit more immersive where the same institution is going to have um, some finance people that are gonna be more data intensive. They might have data scientists, they might have data analysts, they might have, uh, they might know that they want access to Tableau and Click and all of this stuff at the same time. So for them, this is a different uh, experience. So their game board is presented with, um, you know, some pretty content, but it's also pre presented with some actual BI content that they can, they can consume. They might wanna go into uh, some financial uh, analysis and in this case, you know, you've got some Tableau here coupled with some Click and some Cognos. So that's important because I need to see all these things on the screen uh, at once, right? I might want to, you know, pop out into uh, into full screen mode and and you know analyze this data in uh, in Tableau and do whatever it is that I want to do there. <clears throat> we go into um, the folder structures again. We talked about how you can organize your content. I can. Haha, -ha, that's, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> and so actually this top one, I, I even marked them. So this top one is Tableau. Okay. Down here we've got IBM Cognos. And over here we have Click. This, uh, um, what's that? Oh, sorry, my, you can't see my mouse. Uh, 7.48 mil, okay. uh, million. So the idea is that you can, um, you, you, you can make it known what it is. You can make it not known what it is. It's, it's, up to you. it's either up to you or it's, a, it's up to you to let your audience decide if they, if they need to know. One more question. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. You're showing this stuff on a common environment. Mm -hmm. Is there a capability to interact between these two things? So if I chose something in Tableau, it would change the and my passing parameters are changing the step in the Cognos side? Not yet. Okay. But it's, it, that, that, that's the next big innovation, yeah. yeah. Um, and part of this is exactly that. So we've got very, very simple ones here, like the name of the company. Uh, that's gonna be a common dimension in a lot of these reports. So as we start maturing this platform, that's coming, that's hot on the heels because everybody, everybody wants to do this. Now we have techniques to show you how to do it now, um, but it's not as cool as it's going to be. Yeah. Is that a Cognos viewer or if there are parameters or drill tools, it can interact with Cognos itself? Yes. So there's, there's a number of ways that we put the content in the tiles uh, and, that, and that's all dependent on how you want to do it. We do a lot of inference. In this case, this is viewer. So if you do have your drill throughs, all of that continues to work. So it, it's nothing, nothing changes on, on that side. Um, we do have other ways of executing it to, if you want to you know, not do that, or if you want us to intercept that and pass that on to uh, other systems, we have ways of doing that as well. So we have, um, we have a significant amount of rope available to you. And, and that, it's a bit of a cautionary note as well. All right. 
So this, this one here is a little bit more um, complete in terms of the, the, the capabilities of pulling things together. So I'm looking at my financial con my finance content. And in my finance content, actually I'm gonna change the view here. So in my finance content, I see that I've got some, something called additional analysis, I've got the annual report, detailed budget, so on, so on, and so on. So these are all things that make up something that makes sense to me when I call it finance content. So if I look at the detailed budget and I run it, that's, that's great. I'm gonna see uh, a Tableau uh, asset. I just know because I've, I've run this demo already. So once Tableau comes up and my phone cools down, we can see it all, it's wonderful. Um, now, here's one of the big benefits of Thea. This detailed budget asset, right? Everyone who comes here knows where to get it. Well, today, great news everybody, we, we don't have to use Tableau anymore for this. We've actually, we've got a version of this running under Cognos Analytics, and we wanna try that out. So what I'm going to do as the administrator of this game board or someone who has the correct capabilities or privileges, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go and change that. So I'm gonna change detailed budget so that um, someone else, when the next time they come here, they're gonna see something different. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my environments that I have configured, and I'm gonna say, you know, this, um, that dashboard that we just created that happens to be called policy analysis, really what it is is this. So we've created you know, detailed budget and here it is. So nothing's changed from an organizational perspective. It's still there, right? Every, I still come here to get my detailed budget, but when I action it, I'm now gonna be interacting with uh, a Cognos Analytics asset as opposed to a Tableau asset. Now. That in, that, that in of itself is pretty interesting because this helps from A to B. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's Cognos 10 to Cognos 11, if it's you know, a, a Tableau to Cognos, it doesn't really matter which direction you go. But what is, in, what is really interesting is that we capture every one of those clicks. We audit everything the user does. Every time they run a report, every time they navigate, we can tell you what they've done. So if suddenly, you know, on Wednesday afternoon, we've switched from the Tableau version of the report to the Cognos version of the report, and we compare uh, one month of pre and post, and we notice that the usage has spiked. Well, that's interesting, right? You can, you can use that information. Likewise, if the usage has plummeted and people are commenting negatively on it, well, we can just back it out. We can go back to the original one, retool, fix whatever it is that we think is wrong with the, uh, the Cognos Analytics one and bring it back. Or we can just let people pick the one that they want by adding a second one. Right? You can have the detailed budget that comes from Tableau and the detailed budget that comes from Cognos Analytics and let people pick the one that they want. Yeah. So, so if I were to have uh, a page with multiple visualizations coming from different mm -hmm. um, tools, and first of all, would each of those honor the security that's set up within the tool so we're not recreating the security in this platform? And then a follow-on question would be if a user can see seven out of ten things on a page, mm -hmm. but they don't have security to the three, can they that's right. see the seven? Okay, so that's, that's, those are good questions. Um, and the answer is yes. So what we do, and I'm, I'm going to jump out of script here, and I'm going to show you part of the secret sauce. So um, your Thea identity is a collection of your other identities. So typically, um, most... Most organizations have Cognos and Tableau set up under single sign-on or it's part of a single sign-on. So our demo environment is not. But if it were, it would all uh, magically work together because tr uh, Thea becomes part of that trust between those applications. Now, the big so what here is that your identity is made up of entitlements to those different systems. So I happen to have, you know, my Cognos 11, I'm, I'm known as user one. So my credentials allow me to interact as user one with Cognos 11. Uh, I'm also for Cognos 10. Uh, I also happen to be user one as well. So the, the security entitlements that you have inside your, your systems are automatically honored uh, at, just as a result of how it's architected because we, we, we establish a session as the, the credentials that you give us. So we can't go beyond that. What Thea also does is it allows you to shrink that even further. So you might have access to 100 uh, reports in Cognos, but you say, you know what? I only want Thea to be aware of 50 of those. So you can reduce what uh, Thea can see and then your security is applied on top of that. And you can take it one step further 
by allowing only certain assets inside of a inside of a game board to be seen. So in this case, if I go down this additional analysis, so this is actually pointing to a folder in Cognos 11 or Cog Cognos Analytics. It's, it's pointing to that. So whoever I'm logged in as will see the content in here as they're supposed to, which which is exactly what you're asking. So what you're trying to avoid is all of a sudden, you know, I see something that I'm not supposed to see, and if I try and interact with it, I, I error out because I'm, I'm not allowed. So none of that happens because of the way we federate identities inside of Thea. So, no, thank you for the question. So what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm just going to show you different ways that people can actually experience the content. So they, you know, they're, they're looking at this. They, you know, they want to experience it more of like in a carousel view. So they've got options in terms of how to look at it. You know, they can collapse the... They can collapse it, they can filter it, they can do all kinds of different things with it. So that, you know, we give them uh, you know, a more compelling experience um, when looking at content that they're already familiar with. So the last, uh, the last page, um, sorry, yep. So when you say that uh, if the person is, won't be able to, let's say that person doesn't have access to that particular box. Yes. The way, the way it's currently configured is if they don't see this particular, they can't see this report, it would just be a blank, a blank. You, you can do it so that there's a fallback uh, or a default. Typically what we do is we have some static content that you can put in place. So for example, if you're trying to show a specific report in this game board and people don't have access to it, you can put something else up, like a news feed or a web page or omit the tile. There's different ways of addressing that. Um, but typically, What's happening is on this left-hand side here, so this is an example of pointing to uh, a folder within Cognos. It's typically set up so that the first one that shows up in here is driving the content of here. So if I, I might want to interact with policy analysis, um, and that'll, that'll drive here. So this list here will be secured based on who you are. And depending on how you have the game board wired up, uh, you can decide what goes into those, uh, what goes into those tiles. So the, the primary audience for this are consumers, information consumers, people that you, if, if, if you gave them a pair of scissors, they would stab themselves in the eye. So you give them the rounded ones first. And once they've, de <laughs> once they've demonstrated with a cork on it, once they've demonstrated that they can handle that, then you kind of augment their privileges. Um, three minutes or three seconds? Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. So you, you can slowly augment their privileges. Um, what I do want to show you real quick here um, is we're, we're going to run out of time. So I'm going to jump into, I'm going to really test the limits of what I can do here. So I'm going to go open up an RDP connection. I'm going to show you the last <laughs> pillar of, uh, of Thea that's actually pretty important. So we talked about the uh, ability to reuse your models and packages so that you can uh, pass your data entitlements across to different, uh, different technologies. So just like the question you asked, uh, if, I'm, if I'm user one and I'm only allowed to see these certain reports, will that be honored? So the answer is yes. Within a specific set of reports, I might have role level security applied in my models. So how do I carry that forward? So if I'm a Tableau, if I want to use Tableau now and point to that report, I want to point to different models, how do I ensure all of that? Well, one of Thea's uh, strengths is the ability to do just that. So I'll, I'll launch Tableau real quick. And I'm going to log in uh, to the Thea driver with my Thea identity. So I'm going to connect. And what we should see, actually, I'm quite surprised that my phone is working this well. So. I'm going to look at uh, IBM Cognos Go Sales, and now I'm going to look at all the things that I have available to me. So this, this should look familiar. So I'm going to bring products uh, across, and then I'm going to bring uh, sales across. And the join should be correct. Yep. So I can update that. So what's happening now is I'm logged in as D Nelson, like my Modio ID, and it's talking to Cognos as me. So I'm getting all of my data entitlements passed through to Tableau right here. That's what's happening right now. So this is equivalent to going to Query Studio, running a query, downloading the CSV, pulling it up inside of, um, what is this called, Tableau, and then importing it there. However, everything I just did is tracked. So I now know that dnelson at modio.com just executed a query against Thea from Tableau and retrieved this data. That's probably information that IT wants to have because now they know that I'm using Tableau for this. Now, the same pattern is true, 
and I know I'm going to get the hook here. The same pattern is true for any technology. So let's use Power BI because that's the other one that's you know, popping up all over the place. It's the exact same pattern. Right? It doesn't matter what the technology that you want to connect from. You can honor those, those data entitlements using the exact same approach. So anything that can consume um, JDBC and ODBC, which is everything, um, you can actually, oh, sorry, get data real quick. So anything that can connect through any of those protocols is a candidate to be using uh, Thea to receive the benefits of the data sets that you have. So as I'm providing my credentials here, you can currently connect to Cognos packages and Cognos reports. Um, the reports can be bit written off of anything. Uh, I think my password is this. And shortly you'll be able to connect to TM1 sheets and TM1 cubes so in, the exact, in the exact same way that we're doing here. So now if I'm in Power BI and I want to get some data from Cognos, the experience is slightly different, but it's talking to a, what it thinks is a relational database. And what Thea is doing behind the scenes is it's completely obfuscating what's happening. So let's look again at our Go Sales and let's pull up maybe products and bring that in. Well, we can just load that. So it's the same thing as you know, selecting star from products, but all the goodness of your data entitlements are all preserved. So that's the, that's the third and, and uh, final pillar of, uh, of Thea. Am I, am I done? That's it? Okay. So, so that's, that was the, I'm happy to, um, you know, I, we don't have time for questions, right? So we can, we can, you can corner me in the hall. I, I usually respond well to coffee. Um, it's up to you. Any quick questions before we wrap up? Oh boy. Okay, you first. Um, is Thea part of the current licensing agreement that we have with Modio or is it a separate license? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> give, give me an easy question. <laughs> Uh, real quick, yeah. Single sign-on? Yes. So uh, from an end user standpoint who has access to all these different tools, yep. so your point and so on and so forth, um, is it single sign-on? If, if you have single sign-on, so the short answer is yes. And there's about 11 different ways we can tweak that. Because you might have single sign-on for three of five systems and then username and password for the other ones. Depending which ones you delegate as the, as the, the uh, primary order credential set, you can achieve pseudo single sign-on because at some point you have to provide the credentials to those other systems, but they would only have to do it once. Okay. So, so the short answer is yes. Um, so what I'll do is, I know we, I, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting the, the evil eye from Murray, so I'll wrap it up and then we can, you can just talk to me out there. Does that work? Thank you. Thanks.